All right. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for joining uh, this uh, uh, session. So this session two, uh, and uh, uh, like uh, got a pretty good response from uh, the last session, and uh, hopefully it was helpful for everyone. So uh, just uh, like before we move on to the second section, uh, like uh, in last session I mentioned that there is there are few things that I I was demonstrating in the session which was. Uh, like not released uh, on live, uh, but now today, today uh, morning itself, we have released all, all those on, on live site. So you would be able to see all those changes that I was uh, demonstrating in the last week's uh, call. So just a short update there. Uh, now about this particular session, uh, like uh, as uh, you know, this is about managing service. So there are two brief areas that I'll cover uh, as part of this session is like uh, managing or creating service uh, and uh, like while creating service, uh, how you can create your questionnaire or the structure of the survey. So both of those areas would be covered in this session. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the format of the, the session would be same, like I'll be covering a few topics or a couple of screens, and then there will be some question answer session. I'll take uh, three, four questions, and then I'll move on to another section, and then uh, we can uh, go with the Q&A again. Uh, and finally, at the end, we can uh, share ideas and suggestions. We got some very uh, great ideas last week. so. We've already kind of uh, planning to schedule them over the next uh, uh, couple of uh, sprints. So let's see how it goes. But uh, yeah, uh, please uh, uh, put on your suggestions and questions. So it would be helpful for everyone. Right. So let's uh, move uh, to managing service. Uh, so as a part of managing survey, uh, the f I think uh, how you can first uh, create the survey and then uh, how you can uh, create the template is how I'll, I'll take it forward. So I'll uh, show you how to create a survey, uh, how to uh, edit uh, the survey uh, uh, configurations and also like how you can uh, see the progress uh, of a particular survey. So all those things would be covered in this uh, area. So let me take you. So once you log in, uh, you would see uh, a screen which is called as manage uh, participants. So uh, when you uh, go to manage participants and then when you click on uh, this, uh, go to manage and service. So it would uh, manage and manage service. So survey and then manage service. So it would take you to the list of service. So these are all the uh, service that uh, are uh, there. And on this particular screen, this is a list screen. I'll, I'll come to this screen in a bit, but before moving to the list of it, I'll just uh, uh, show you how to create a new survey. So on the right hand side, you will see a button which is called as create a new survey. Uh, and when I go to create a new survey, there are certain fields that I would like to uh, uh, address here. So first is a title. So this title would be the name of the survey and this title would be the exact title which would be uh, seen by the company users on the home page of the system. So uh, you can uh, uh, add the title, relevant title, whatever you would like uh, the users to see uh, uh, as, a, as a survey uh, title. So, so that is one thing. The second is the template. So uh, the template is like uh, this particular survey should use which template structure or which questionnaire structure uh, can be specified from here. Uh, so uh, one survey uh, or sorry, uh, multiple surveys can use the same template that you have created. So uh, if I say uh, create test uh, survey one, uh, and then uh, I, I select uh, say uh, TNP 2020. Okay, uh, so that can uh, means it would use that particular template or template structure that we have created. Uh, I'll come to that in, in a second part of it. But this is what uh, template means the structure of the survey that you have created. And uh, if I say suppose create another survey, which is like a test, uh, this another survey can also use the same template. So there is like a, a one to many relation is definitely possible. So that is no uh, 
need that every survey should have uh, one template attached to it. The same template can be used for multiple surveys. Uh, and every year, if your structure is not changing, then you can keep on using the same template and the, the name of the surveys can be 2021, 2022, et cetera. So uh, it can be one-to-many relationship or uh, if you want, it can be one-to-one -one relationship as well. So template is just exactly as the name suggests, it's a template. Uh, uh, then the next part is uh, the start on and the end on date. So the start on date and end on, end on date is basically uh, the timeline uh, during which you want this survey to be visible to the company users. Okay, so it's uh, uh, so when you give a start on date, your survey would automatically be visible or visible to company users from that start date. Uh, you can also specify like if you see there is also a way you can specify the time. Okay, so you can specify the date and time, uh, uh, the exact date and time on which the survey would be visible to the company users. So you can predefine it. There is no need that on that particular day you go and uh, make it visible. Uh, you can kind of schedule it for the, the uh, future dates uh, as well. So similarly, there is an end date uh, on, on the end date, the survey would expire. And after that, no, company users would be able to uh, go and submit their responses or change their responses. So nothing would be able, I mean, they would not be able to do anything on the system once the end date is reached. And uh, if they have not started, so they, they won't be able to see uh, it in the new tab at all. So uh, nothing can be done after that. So and that is what the the importance of the start and end date is. So uh, this can be called as a deadline, if I might say. If you do not want to have any deadline, you can kind of uh, completely skip that. So uh, you can leave the field blank as well. Uh, so it would be like there would be no end date uh, to the survey. The next is uh, like don't close close when end date is reached. So this is uh, used uh, like uh, like even if the end date is reached and you want the companies to continue submitting their responses, like all the companies, then you can like uh, click on this uh, tab here or uh, this checkbox here. Okay, so the companies would be able to uh, keep on submitting. The survey won't be closed. Uh, uh, ever for them. Uh, the next is the visible to survey users. So this is another uh, part or area which handles the visibility of the survey. Okay, so if I don't tick this box, then even if the start date and end um, and start date is uh, uh, means gone, uh, the survey won't be visible to company users. So this is mainly used uh, at a time when uh, uh, the managers or administrators are actually testing the survey uh, and they want to uh, go in as a uh, user and try to or log in as a particular participant and see how the survey is looking uh, and uh, what are the things that would be visible. So at this point in time, uh, they have to not tick this uh, box so that uh, the company users, even if they register and log in, they won't be able to uh, see that survey. So it's an additional check which is uh, in place uh, for the visibility and uh, whether the survey is live or not. Uh, the uh, the web page name, uh, it can be ignored. Uh, it is like auto-generated field. So whatever survey name you give here, uh, the uh, it would basically give an automatic name. So let me like now uh, create it. Okay, so if you see this auto, the web page name uh, was auto-generated uh, and uh, rest of the things are now saved. Now, after clicking save, there are few more fields that are part of this. Uh, so uh, one is this model field. So this is like close on submit and always open. So close on submit is like whenever the companies go to the last page, the submission page and submit their survey, normally the, sur uh, the surveys get ended because uh, uh, most of the clients don't want them to again go and uh, uh, do another submission so or, or modify any of the responses that they have given after the submission. Uh, the, the second one that is there is always open. So this is a very interesting uh, way. Like uh, if you would have used uh, Google Forms, then uh, in the Google Forms, there are there is a way where 
uh, you can accept multiple responses from the same users or from the same participants, right? So similarly, if you want uh, a, a survey uh, such that uh, the same company can enter multiple responses, uh, when I say multiple, they can open multiple surveys with the same name, then uh, you can uh, keep the survey as always open. Okay, so uh, there would always, even if you have uh, started or the companies have started one of the survey, there will be always another survey which would be there in the new tab. Okay, so uh, so that they can start uh, another response. So uh, in some of the cases, uh, uh, this is helpful, but in most of the cases, it's normally close on submit. So that's the reason it's kind of a default selection there. So so that's what it is. Uh, I'll just ignore this particular uh, field here. Uh, is not uh, uh, functional at this point. Uh, show progress on overview. Uh, so this is a newly added feature. So uh, if if you uh, remember, there is uh, whenever you go to the overview page of ProBench, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, there is a small uh, pie uh, pie diagram or donut chart which shows the progress of how much uh, uh, of it is completed. Okay. So in some cases, there is uh, like uh, some of our clients use. Uh, ProBench for multiple reasons. Uh, some of them collect the data, uh, the public available data, they analyze it first and then make it visible to the companies. And some of the, the, the surveys are self-assessment surveys. So in the self-assessment surveys, they are normally needed. So we show the clock, but in the public assessment, because the analyst or assessors have already completed uh, the survey, uh, uh, the progress uh, uh, clock, uh, or the pro progress donor chart does not make sense because it would be normally 100% already because assessors or analysts have already submitted the responses. So uh, some of our clients do it for both the purposes, like uh, for self-assessment as well, and uh, they also do it for uh, the public assessments. So in that case, uh, there is a need to show uh, the progress for one survey, but to hide the progress for another uh, survey. So now we have added this on the survey tab so, so that uh, administrators can decide whether to show or hide the progress uh, uh, a donor chart there, right? Uh, next is email on submit. So this is one way where you can, like as an administrator, receive an email uh, whenever the the user submit the service, okay? So you can specify comma separated email as it's mentioned. Uh, you can have a comma separated multiple emails. So whenever the, the, the company users submit their survey, all these emails that are specified here would get an email by uh, automatically saying that this and this companies have submitted their responses or I have submitted their service. So this is uh, this is where you can set uh, your email addresses as an administrator. The next is group. This is again like what we discussed last time uh, uh, with the participants. Like whenever you create a participant, you have to assign that participant a group uh, to which that belongs uh, or uh, that group is also like uh, assigned here so that uh, Whenever you select a group here uh, and uh, a participant is also uh, kind of assigned a group only when both of them matches. So the participants uh, in that group uh, or, or say for example, a participant in self-assessment group would only be able to uh, see the surveys uh, that are part of the self-assessment group. Okay, so this is another way to ha handle the visibility because there are normally like suppose uh, you are assessing like 200, 300 companies or 1000 companies uh, out of uh, that, uh, like 500 of them are par uh, part of uh, some group which is like uh, a part of just a self-assessment group and another 500 are part of the public assessment group. So you can create such groups and uh, only to, uh, assign the participants to the group as well as that survey to a group. So that would match and uh, only the, uh, means the visibility would be handled in that case. So that is where it is. 
the next is local i will come to that point in, in a bit uh, what this local is all about uh, the next is the survey id to be prefilled from okay so this is another very important uh, field uh, when it comes to uh, pre population of data year on year okay so normally like what we uh, have is like uh, uh, all our clients mostly do the surveys every year okay and the companies or assessors want to know what uh, data was uh, filled last year so that they can compare and uh, select the responses accordingly and they can evaluate whether there is anything uh, changed so so a probench already has a pre population uh, functionality so that uh, the responses would be pre populated uh, into the boxes or the response boxes uh, and uh, it would be highlighted it would not be saved but it would just be highlighted so that uh, if you want to use uh, all the data as same uh, from the last year you can just see uh, review it and just click on save now where that data comes from is what is handled from this particular field okay so suppose there are like uh, five different surveys or uh, five uh, uh, like five years survey previously that has been filled and you want that this year survey should be prefilled from uh, not 2020 because uh, due to covid uh, the things were different but you want to pre populate it from the 2019 survey okay so uh, in that case you can like uh, go here and select uh, that 2019 survey okay and uh, the pre population would be then done using the uh, the 2019 survey okay so the pre population won't be done from the previous year survey so uh, and if you want to uh, also select multiple surveys here then it would go and uh, so it would first check what is the very latest response uh, if there is no latest response for that particular question it would go to the previous year and it would go to the previous year so that's how it would uh, basically uh, take so wherever it finds the latest response it would go and take for that particular uh, node or that particular response uh, the lastly there is a hide survey uh, so hide survey whenever clicked like there is there are uh, uh, situations when uh, end date has reached by the company but a uh, company has not completed their survey or they have not submitted their survey so next year when they actually get into the system uh, under the open tab of uh, the home page okay what they see is they see the previous year survey because they have not yet submitted it so that would be in the open state uh, they obviously cannot submit anything uh, but uh, they would still see it in the open state and uh, they also see uh, once they open this year survey they also see that so sometimes the uh, companies get confused whether uh, i will have to give the 2020 survey or 2021 survey uh, if the naming conventions are not uh, correct so when it comes to hide survey what it would do is it would hide all the surveys that are in open state okay so uh, so that uh, there are no surveys that are visible in the open state except for the survey that is uh, uh currently live okay so you can do uh, use this setting from for the previous year survey so that uh, those surveys would be hidden if they are in open state and not in the submitted state okay uh, the new tab is uh, already taken care of uh, like let me like for the people who are new maybe they are not able to visualize so there is a new tab there is this open tab and there is one more tab that is submission tab okay so uh, when the survey is not started at all like by the company then it is in the new tab uh, when they start uh, it would come into the open tab and once they submit it would come under the submission tab okay so the new tab visibility is handled by the deadlines okay so if you give the deadline and visible to survey users uh, that was uh, here uh like this deadline and visible to survey users then uh, the new tab the survey won't be visible in the new tab because the deadline has passed and you have not done visible to survey so either of them okay uh, but uh, the survey would still stay in the open state if you have not submitted okay uh, and because even the deadline is gone it can still stay in the open state because they might want to go and refer to it maybe but if you want to hide uh, in the open state 
then the visibility can be managed using the the hide survey so this would manage the visibility fr from the open tab okay so to avoid confusion for the company on which survey they have to go and answer all right so uh, this is what uh, is about uh, the edit uh, of the survey or like uh, creating a new survey i'll come to this template in in a short while but this is what uh, like when you go to the manage survey you click on edit the same thing you will just see what you what i just explained about creating a new survey uh, so this is how you can edit the configurations and meanings of each of the field here the next uh, thing that i would like to take up is the like uh, managing the language of the survey so there is also a possibility to create multilingual surveys in probench okay uh, something that is already there but i think quite a lot of you does not know about it uh, so i'd like to take this opportunity to do that uh, so uh, when it comes to multilingual survey uh, things are not automated let me clarify that uh, it is not uh, there is no automated way of uh, having the same survey in multiple languages however there is uh, a way where you can like uh, if you see here at the bottom of this survey okay you see you can see everything in english here but similarly you can create the copy of the same survey uh, and uh, specify the locale say uh, france okay uh, just to uh, understand what locale it is and then you can change uh, this text here uh, to a french language so whatever text that you have in english uh, can be kind of obviously manually someone will have to do it uh, but uh, can be changed to a different language so whenever that uh, like a survey is opened with with a french uh, thing then they would be able to uh, uh, then go and uh, see uh, this the same survey in the french language okay so uh, then whenever we are exporting the data we can like decide uh, whether we want it from all the surveys or from a particular survey but this is how you can like decide or uh, change the uh, language of your survey in multiple so uh, in different languages so uh, one of our clients actually do it for five different languages Uh, so uh, it's perfectly uh, doable so there is like another way of uh, changing the language is like uh, you provide us uh, like there is a way in the survey where you can have export template notes it would give you an excel sheet and in the excel sheet you will have all the text in uh, all the node ids along with its uh, uh, text english text uh, you can add a column uh, with the Uh, preferred language and send it across to us we will import it for you so that is another way of uh, changing the language so currently it's manual it's not automated but yeah uh, that is there is still a way of doing it so just in case not aware about it so this is about the edit screen uh, uh, now this is uh, i i'll take you to the uh, the list page so there are couple of things that we have newly introduced uh, in our uh, list page or survey list page okay so it's uh, like a normal list uh, but this is live uh, column uh, has been modified a bit to give you an exact uh, idea whether that particular survey is visible to company users or not visible to company users so whenever you see this green tick okay uh that means that that particular survey is visible to the company users and if you see it as a exclamation uh that means that that survey is not visible to company users so uh that is that would kind of clarify that quite a lot of time there is a confusion with our users like they are not aware whether the uh, survey is live or not live okay so this is one way to so previously this uh, tick and exclamation was only dependent on uh, like uh, visible to survey users that i uh, just uh, shown you it was uh, just uh, taking or taking into consideration this particular field to decide whether it is live or not i i mean 
for a, from a display point of view. But now we have modified to cover uh, the start date, end date, as well as uh, the visible to survey. So whenever it's uh, tick here, it is 100% that that survey would be visible to the company users. So that one change we have done. Uh, uh, additional columns that we have added recently is participants submitted. So how many participants from this particular survey uh, has submitted the service? Uh, would uh, you will see the number of participants. So you normally have an idea like uh, there are normally 1000 participants who normally participate and out of that 200 of them have submitted their service. So this number would change whenever you come to this page, uh, if there are any changes. Uh, the similarly, there is one more thing is participants started. So there is a difference between submitted and started. So people who have just started to submit like they are in process of submitting or process of responding then you will still see that here okay so so that you know that at least like yeah some of the users have started uh, getting into the system and uh, providing their responses so this is mainly for the companies uh, or for our clients who do the uh, self-assessment uh, service where the companies themselves go in and do that. So this is where it would be useful. So you can see that for each of the service. Another new uh, area that uh, we have created is show progress. Okay, uh, so this show progress when clicked would take you to a screen uh, where you will be able to see uh, the list of participants who have actually started or submitted uh, the service uh, for that particular survey. And you will see the progress, like whether they have completed 50%, 100%, 75%, etc. You can always uh, like sort it uh, based on the sorting here. So this would give an idea, like normally this, like before this change, uh, uh, you guys had to like create a data set for the same thing and then export an Excel uh, and then do the necessary changes, okay? But now after this change, I think that would uh, help you to directly see the progress here, okay? And it, it also uh, shows uh, whether that particular participant has submitted or not, what is their submitted date, et cetera, when they last answered and how many registered users are there for a particular uh, company. So all those information is, uh, just available on one screen instead of having a separate data set and download the Excel every time you want to have this information. So this is uh, one of the recent changes uh, and it's already live. So uh, you can already go and use this uh, feature. All right. So that's what is about uh, uh, the service. Okay, there is, I'll quickly touch one more thing. I, I know I'm running out of time uh, for this particular section, but I quickly would like to uh, address this one particular functionality, uh, which is called as participant date. Uh, so using this functionality, uh, you can uh, kind of set start date and end date, which is the, the start date of the survey and the end date of the survey or the expiry of the survey. Uh, for individual participants. So, so there are quite some uh, scenarios where like out of the, uh, the number of companies that should have been participated, there are always a uh, few companies who come to you with a request to extend the deadline. Okay, so in those cases, uh, like instead of extending the deadline for the whole survey, uh, I think you can go to those uh, selected few companies uh, and uh, when you click on edit, you will see the, the dates that were already set for the main survey. You can change the start, uh, end date uh, for only that company and set it to override. So when you click on override, it would set it and then you can click on create. So what this would do is, uh, it would, for Nestle uh, here, uh, it would kind of have a different start date and end date. So this way you can basically handle it for selected few companies who have actually requested for genuine reasons and only change the uh, expiry date for those uh, com uh, companies. So this is very much uh, possible to do uh, uh, from within ProBench. So just to repeat, this is where uh, you can do it uh, for individual participants. 
All right. A uh, lot of thing I covered. Uh, any any questions before I move ahead? Um, I'll go with a quick question. Sure. Uh, so it's it's really exciting to see all the updates. So thank you so much for sharing them, Gautam. Sure, no problem. Um, one of them was about uh, participants submitted and the progress where we see um, how many have submitted or progress. I was just wondering if there's any sort of filters or a place where we can look into the counts um, or is it a possibility in future? Maybe I'll pack it for suggestions. So um, uh, maybe you can then, uh, so you want filters uh, for, uh, sorry, if you can repeat that question, I didn't yeah. get. So for example, there are 80 participants who have submitted and say 20 who have, who are still in progress. But like, if it will be a long list, maybe it's difficult to count. So like somewhere we, where we can get those quick numbers or I think you suggest. Okay, download. so uh, maybe like one thing I can immediately, you can do is like, uh, uh, on this progress uh, page that you, when you click on here, when you go to the progress page, uh, you can kind of uh, sort using the submitted column. Okay. So there you will see all the list of like whether means uh, the non-submitted ones can come on top when on the, on uh, sorting, or you can also like download this same information in an Excel and then do the necessary filters if, uh, so, uh, so that's the current way, uh, but yeah, obviously going forward, I can take that as a suggestion uh, on having such filters like only unsubmitted should be visible and all those uh, areas. Uh, but yeah, for, for now you can use this ordering and uh, the Excel download uh, that can help you with that. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Sure. Any other quick questions? I had a quick question. question. Sure. Um, on the email uh, on submission yeah. Um, yeah. is it possible to set who receives the email based on the language of the survey that was completed yes it is possible because for each of the language there will be a different survey okay so okay. currently it is like uh, this one survey so similarly you will have another survey which would uh, say france uh, or uh, yeah, means whatever name you want to give uh, to understand. And then like for that survey, you can specify a different email on submit. Okay. So Fantastic. Thank you. yeah, so that, that is definitely possible. Last one, one more, if anyone. Sure. Then I, I'll move on quickly to the next part, which is like uh, template, uh, how to manage templates. Now we mentioned here that uh, there is a template assigned to each of the survey. So without template, there is no survey because the whole structure is within the template. So I'll uh, like quickly, like I can edit it directly from here or uh, edit directly from here. Uh, and this is the template that is already there in place. Uh, so within this template, like for this particular session, I will not go too deep into each of the, the tabs that are displayed here. Uh, I'll first give a basic idea about it. And if there is uh, a request from uh, quite some users to have an advanced uh, version of it, we can have it maybe uh, at the end of all the seven sessions, or uh, uh, we can have an eight session to uh, go deep into each of the question types and things. But for now, I just want to like uh, touch base on uh, the very important areas. Uh, so uh, I, I'll do that uh, for today at least. Okay, uh, so uh, here, uh, like the first thing that you will see is, uh, this is the name. Okay, so this is the name of the template. So whatever you change, even after creating the template or even after creating the survey, if you want to change the name of the template for your own reference, you can feel free to do it. Nothing would be impacted. Uh, so uh, even like, uh, once the survey is set up and the survey has started, if you want to change the name of the service, uh, you can go and change the name of the service, even that would not impact anything, unless that survey name is used anywhere for any configuration or anything. So uh, that is definitely doable and possible. So do not worry about that. So this would be the name, uh, name of the template. 
and then like before going to each of the parts i'd first like to cover uh, the toolbox that you are seeing here so these are uh, like is, is my screen properly visible or is it too uh, tiny let me know if it is not clearly visible okay okay so uh, like i'll go through each of them so firstly this particular area here okay so when it says q q is like uh, each question is considered as q so q is for question so if you see the complete survey all of the nodes that we have added so we call it as nodes so all of the nodes are added as q so everything is a question okay there is no question answer everything is a question okay uh, the next one here is the the text uh, like uh, if you want to display a text in between your questions or uh, in between the page uh, or you need uh, some uh, guidance notes to be added against each question then this is like what we call it as inline text is what we uh, call it so this is like some kind of an html or uh, uh, what i might say is the formatted text that you would like to display within within the survey uh, somewhere on the top or bottom or between two questions so so then uh, this is this can be used uh, for that okay the next one is like question mark which is actually a condition okay so if you want to add a branching logic uh whether like based on certain questions you want to show or hide certain questions so all those kind of conditions uh, are, are done using this uh, condition tab add a condition so uh, for that and then this is an info node uh, info node is like uh, used for information like the number of companies uh, uh, sorry the number of countries that you want to display in a drop down so all those uh, things or uh, we create newly added rules so rules can be created using this info box so uh, so these are the four different types of nodes that can be added now if you see what is a node so each of this thing is a node uh, when it comes to probench so we call it as nodes okay because it's a tree structure uh, like uh, uh, you would have already noticed that it's a complete tree structure and each uh, thing is a node in the tree okay so that's the reason we call it as a node uh, okay so uh, these are the different types of nodes so uh, if i go inside this you would uh, see that this is like inline text we have added and this is the normal question that we have added and then there at the bottom this is the condition type that uh, is displayed and then at the bottom there is info nodes the rules that we have created okay so these are the four different type of nodes that is there then on the left hand side these are the things that would help you to uh, either add a, uh, sorry uh, manipulate the position of the the questions okay uh, or you want to create copy of it so uh, it's like similarly this is for uh, useful for the cut uh, this is used for the copy this is used for the paste and then this is for the delete okay so it's a cut copy paste uh, thing so i'll just demonstrate how each of them can be used okay uh, to kind of move the questions uh, uh, around the template if at all you want to copy something or you want to cut or change the position of one question to another question so that is what i'll just uh, demonstrate here okay so let me first uh, take this particular thing uh, just for an example uh, okay i'll uh, i want to move this question okay from this particular section that is product section to environment section okay then how will i do it now uh, i'll first cut it i should not copy it because then the node id is change okay and the copy would actually create a copy of that question which i think you don't want because you want to move the question okay so when i click on cut okay it would show me what uh, node has cut here so it would demonstrate that and then i go to environment and then click on paste okay so sorry there's a paste here so i'll click on paste it would ask me if you read this uh, properly it would ask me where i want to paste it okay if i click okay 
it would immediately add before it. So when I clicked on environment and I click on OK, it would paste it above the environment as a sibling of environment. OK. And if I click on cancel, it would add it as a child node. So it would when I click on cancel. So currently I need to have it as a child node of environment. OK, so I'll click on cancel here. OK, so now you see this quality has been added under the environment. So uh, whenever I'm uh, hovering over the questions, uh, uh, if you notice, uh, there is a border along that, like the whole toolbox uh, is moving along as a border. So you have to, uh, this border is to help you to guide like which question is, uh, which question you are currently on and what are the, the child questions or the complete uh, scope of that question. So to help you to where you want to paste or you want to paste above below. Uh, so what is the area you are touching? So this uh, is basically a guideline that is given alongside. Okay. Now, suppose I want to create a copy of quality and uh, have the same question uh, under the product as well, just uh, for the demonstration point of view. So what I'll do is I'll create a copy of it. Okay. I'll go to product and then paste it. And I'll click on cancel because I want it as a child node. Okay. So I'll click on cancel. Okay, so now it's uh, both under environment and quality, the structure, the whole structure under the quality is copied. It's not only that one node which is copied, but the complete uh, uh, tree under the quality is copied when I copy the whole quality. Okay, so that's how it uh, normally works. Uh, and then uh, like if I suppose uh, there is a requirement, I want quality to be above a process a node okay so in that case what i'll do is i'll cut from here okay and go to process so see my uh, uh, border it is on the process and i click on paste okay and i because i don't want it as a child of process i want it as a sibling of process to be copied above the process so i'll click on okay this time so when i click on okay uh, it is now pasted above the process so now the product has uh, a quality as its first child uh, and then process and then marketing. Got it? So this is how I can move around. Uh, like I can like completely select a product, cut it and paste it above something or uh, just go to one of the very last node and move that node. So it all depends on the scope that is selected here uh, using that black border that you see. So completely depend on border uh, that uh, scope, what I'm copying and what I'm pasting. Everything under that border would be copied uh, irrespective it is op in an open state or a closed state. It would copy the complete structure. Okay, so uh, that is about uh, the cut copy paste. So similarly, I can delete as well. And also there is a way like if you want to uh, kind of uh, cut multiple items in one go and paste it somewhere, then you can also do that. So I'll click on this particular, I want to move these two uh, pages under the product. Then what I'll do is I'll cut here on this page. I'll go to the next, I'll cut there as well. So you will see there is like uh, two, uh, you will see whatever you have cut, including the name of the pages. And then I'll go to product and then paste it. So this again asked me whether you want to as a child or a uh, sibling, then I'll click on cancel. Okay, so now environment only has quality, but product also now has policy and commitment and implementation. So, uh, so similarly, you can do it in bulk as well. Like you can click multiple and do it. If you want to delete similarly, uh, you can like also like uh, uh, this is a kind of uh, workaround, uh, but I can select this as cut. I'll cut and then click on delete directly. Okay. So both these nodes would be deleted from the system. Okay. So uh, it's uh, deleted, both of them. So see, uh, this is the way you can bulk delete something instead of deleting it individually. Okay, so that is what is all about this toolbar. And in the toolbar, uh, there is one more thing, like suppose I uh, uh, click here and then I realize like by mistake, I have, I should, I have selected marketing instead of process. 
okay and i want to remove this from the clipboard okay then i can use this uh, thing here okay which says clear the clipboard okay so when i click on clear it would clear so it would not cut it would not copy anything can be cleared from the clipboard so that would be helpful by in case you have by mistake uh, selected something which you shouldn't have selected okay uh, the next thing on the toolbar is this id what we call it as a node id so these are the node ids the individual reference for that particular node if i might say that okay so these node ids are very important when we actually set up conditions okay so uh, each nodes are uh, kind of referenced uh, using this node id at least in uh, probench so these node ids are very important and each node has its unique node id so there is no nodes uh, which have uh, same node ids so it's like a unique reference for that node id so this was about uh, the template uh, i mean uh, the the toolbox okay uh, then any questions so far like when it comes to the toolbox or moving the questions or type of questions how to move around or anything like what is question so if you want to add a question you can directly click on this to add a question okay uh, so similarly you can click on this uh, it would ask you whether like you want to add it above or below okay so when i click on cancel it would add so similarly you can add all of the nodes and move them around so there is no specific for add you can directly click on these nodes no questions all right uh, i'll move ahead uh, the next is like uh, all these uh, icons here so i'll explain you each of these icons what each of the icons mean okay so by default all the questions are like this okay so this is how all the questions are normally so what this means is Uh, like these are all mandatory questions okay when uh, you have not selected it uh, so when you see this as red this means they are all mandatory questions okay uh, so if you want to make a certain question or uh, uh, or a whole section as voluntary uh, you can like click on this so this would change to uh, voluntary okay so whenever you see it as green that means those questions are optional or voluntary for the companies to respond so if you if the companies don't respond to it the the uh, i mean proben should still allow them to continue and uh, the page would be marked as completed uh, if those questions are not answered so these are the uh, this is the way you can change it to mandatory and voluntary so i can again click and it would change to mandatory question okay so uh, the next one is the admin only tab okay so if you want to mark certain questions as admin only what does admin only mean is uh, only the administrator or managers of the survey or only the administrators would be able to see those questions the companies uh, would not see those questions so anything like uh, the reviewer comments or any such questions uh, can be marked as voluntary or oh, sorry uh, the admin only okay so when i click here this means it is locked and only uh, it would only be visible to the administrators so when you go to the front end you can see this admin only questions as a red background so those questions would be having a red background automatically so administrators would be able to see those questions uh, company users won't be able to see those questions so it can be used for some internal references or internal communication uh, whatever you want to uh, have it there Uh, the next one is like copy responses so if and only if i select this uh, here only then the responses would be pre populated from the previous year okay so if you find a question which you are expecting that should be pre populated from the previous year uh, but it is not then might be this particular selection is missing for that particular box okay so if the uh, if you want the pre population to work okay then this uh, should be selected for that particular question okay otherwise it won't uh, work in a way okay so this is very important so 
uh, when we say copy responses, it would copy the responses from the previous survey to this survey, hence the name copy responses there. Okay. Uh, uh, you can ignore this one, it's not uh, much used. Uh, we can go to include in the download. So this is again for the, when, when I'll cover the import part and in our seventh session, uh, how to import responses. Uh, at that particular point in time, this uh, would be needed. Okay, and this is like a uh, notify question. So if you want that whenever a company responds to a particular question, uh, the administrator should be notified that uh, the company has uh, responded to this question, then you can mark this question as notified. Okay, so uh, whenever the companies respond to this question, uh, there is a, a job that is running in the background. Every night you would get an email, uh, like uh, whenever that, so you'll get an email in bulk right uh, for each company so you will know that this company has uh, submitted response for this particular question uh, uh, every night if you have marked any of the questions as notified and the company has responded to that question okay so this is a new notification feature that we have added uh, this uh, is mostly uh, useful uh, in cases of public assessment when the public assessments are uh, kind of uh, given to the company and then companies uh, respond to the their comments or the assessments that are done by the assessors uh, but uh, saying that it's uh, nothing stopping from using it for the self assessment as well if at all that is needed in in the type of uh, or in the way you conduct the the benchmark so yeah this is what uh, the things are all right so before i move to scores uh, if there are any questions i would like to address them uh, yes, hi, it's Teresa. I, I sure. do have a question. Sure. Um, and, and forgive me if, if it's something that could already be avoided, but sometimes in our survey, um, we have a question. It may not be yes or no. It might be uh, like a multiple choice question. And then there's obviously depending on what the response is, it might have a branch where further information is requested. But what I've noticed is sometimes where no further information should actually be requested, um, the option for the branch is still there. Does that make sense? So uh, you mean like if they have selected one of the choices uh, and there is uh, like, there's like, please specify or give further information, that kind of a box under that choice. Uh, is that what yeah, but it may not, it may not be necessarily yes or no it might um yeah it can be any choices like uh, any, any choices. options yeah okay yeah and then there might be a uh, like following that the branch just seems to come up but in some circumstances i'm sure that the branch isn't necessary but it's still there is that something that we just haven't checked on the back end Maybe yeah, I can may, you an maybe or like the maybe the the template setup. Uh, so maybe you have something like this. So when you select a particular option, uh, then uh, a node is added uh, at the bottom here. Uh, I'm sure my network connection is slow, but uh, yeah, a, a node might be added at the bottom like this. Uh, so it would be a child question mm -hmm. here. So, uh, so this would be visible whenever the user select yes or or uh, this particular option. So it would be visible automatically. Okay. So if you uh, see it and uh, you are not expecting it to be visible, so there is something wrong with the template, and those that question should be removed from the template completely. Okay. Uh, or uh, there is like uh, I'm not sure, but if there is a branching condition added then maybe that uh, condition is incorrect, which is forcing that question to be visible uh, instead of uh, it should not be visible. So, uh, so these are the two main reasons there can be for that question to be visible. Okay. Does that make helpful. sense? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it does. Thank sure. you. Sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I was just wondering, um, when copying the responses from last year, where is it drawing that information from? Is it matching the question node IDs from yeah. last year? 
okay yeah so it, it is like uh, the pre population is completely dependent on this node id okay so okay. Uh, wherever it gets uh, the the same node id it would pre populate it from there so that's the reason it is important whenever you are cut uh, cutting and pasting it or copying and pasting it there are two different things because when you copy and paste uh, the new node ids are created uh, uh, and when you cut and paste the same node ids are um, moved from one place to another place so that is the difference between the copy paste and the cut paste okay so it is very important like if you want the pre population to work correctly uh, and you are still moving the question from one place to or one section to another section you have to make sure that you are cutting it and pasting it instead of copying it and pasting it got it thank you sure all right any other thing any other questions all right no problem so uh, i'll continue by like uh, showing few things that are normally used uh, by our users is like uh, there are normally two questions that uh, occur is like uh, if i want to change uh, the text uh, do i need to click on save changes or will the text be automatically uh, changed or modified so uh, to address that particular question uh, here is like whenever you uh, change any text here okay you see this uh, progress coming right so whenever you see that progress coming that means it is automatically saving in the background so that applies to like uh, the question types as well like what are the different question types so whenever i change the question types uh, it would uh, automatically do it in the background you do not have to save uh, like uh, do the save changes on the top okay so uh, it's kind of instant uh, it is modifying in the background as soon as you are modifying it and uh, moving your focus to another field okay so uh, so just to like similarly for uh, mandatory voluntary it it does it on the spot like it is live okay so whenever you change it it would be immediately done in the background uh, so without saving it also uh, to continue on the same point like uh, what is the meaning of the save changes uh, button okay so whenever you change the structure of the survey like uh, adding a, a question adding a node or deleting a node or cutting a node and pasting it somewhere or copying it and uh, creating a new node so all those uh, uh, things are kind of you are modifying the structure of the the template right so in those cases you need to uh, so whenever you do those activities uh, this save changes button would automatically appear okay uh, so uh, now now suppose i've made uh, so many changes i'll click on save changes so this uh, this tells that it's updated successfully i'll return to the same template now suppose see if i uh, modify this uh, text uh you see notice there is no save changes button so when there is no save changes button there is no need for uh any saving uh, separately to be done and whenever i basically say i i am deleting this particular node whenever i delete it okay uh, uh the save changes would automatically appear so whenever i do such structural changes the save changes button so whenever there is a need uh the save changes button would automatically appear okay and if it is appearing with uh, and uh, you are feeling that you have not changed anything uh then uh you have to go to our activity logs and see what has changed uh, uh there is an activity log you can go to the template section and you can check uh, what was uh, modified but uh yeah most of the time save changes only appears when you have modified any uh any structural or you have done any structural changes okay so that is uh, one of the questions that i have frequently asked so i'm just answering that as part of this okay uh, i'll next uh, cover uh, the types of questions uh, so you will see all the type of questions that we have in place so there are about uh, 25 uh, 30 odd question types uh, and the complete list of question types is in our help 
uh, document here under the features for company users, there is a list of questions. So appearance of each of the question types that we have in place uh, is available in this help link. I'll also uh, post it in on our YouTube uh, whenever I uh, post the recording. Uh, you can go and see how each of the question types uh, look. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll currently not get into the details of uh, uh, how each of the question type is being, uh, uh, how it would be displayed. Uh, uh, most of them are self-explanatory. So you will automatically come to know uh, how they would look. Okay, so there are few things that I would like to uh, cover is about the, in, uh, the types of conditions and the type of inline uh, text that we have. Okay, so I'll first cover the types of conditions that we have. Okay, because that is very important to uh, understand. Okay, so by default, the conditions are visible conditions. Okay, so that would handle the visibility of a node, whether that uh, node is visible or not visible. Okay, so uh, that would basically uh, help uh, to decide whether that node should be visible or not. The second is the choose condition. Okay, so uh, when it comes to choose condition, it is as the name suggests, if there is a choice under this particular question, okay, or, or sorry, uh, under this particular condition, okay, then uh, whether that condition is true or false would decide whether that uh, choice would be checked or unchecked. Okay, so if there are, uh, suppose there is uh, a rule in, in your uh, assessment, uh, like if a company is part of uh, something or uh, is, is a certified uh, company, then this particular tick box should be automatically checked uh, instead of they going in and checking it or assessors going in and checking it. So you can set such rules. So in those cases, uh, this choose condition is very uh, helpful. So it would do it for them uh, automatically uh, based on a condition, okay? So like visible invisible is kind of a branching logic. Uh, choose uh, is kind of used for setting up certain rules, whether you want to choose by default or not. Then there are read only conditions. So uh, in case of read only conditions, uh, it is like, uh, if you want to have cert, uh, certain things as read only. So if a, a particular condition is uh, true, then that uh, the question under that condition would be read only for everyone. So uh, depends on whether you want to like, suppose say have a question, which is which a manager can respond to. Okay, but companies should only see it. They should not modify uh, that particular question, but they would still be able to see it, okay? Then in that case, you can use those read-only conditions here, okay? So whether it is true or false, based on that, the read-only and uh, 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 the companies can make the change or not make the change. The next is uh, optional, which is uh, like uh, not useful in our case. Uh, there is like, a pre-select condition uh, and the mandatory condition. So a pre-select condition is similar to the choose condition, uh, but uh, in case of pre-select condition, uh, the users would able to uh, untick it uh, once it is automatically selected by the system, okay? But in case of choose condition, uh, once it is chosen, uh, the users won't be able to go and untick it or change the response there. Okay, so it's set by default, but in pre-select, they would be able to go and modify that response. So that's the difference between the choose condition and the pre-select condition, okay? Uh, then there is a mandatory condition. So uh, suppose I have marked this particular question as uh, uh, voluntary, this particular question, and uh, for certain condition, if a certain condition is true, okay, or a certain rule is true, then I want to mark that question as mandatory. Okay, that question should be mandatory if that particular uh, condition is true, then I will use that as a mandatory condition. So I'll, so, so for the same condition, I can mark it as mandatory. And whenever that triggers, uh, whenever the company sees that question, uh, it would automatically be considered as mandatory and give an error message that this is a mandatory question that you need to answer. 
okay so so depending on the conditions you can do multiple such things like choose automatically visible invisible so uh, there's a lot of uh, things that you can do with conditions uh, within the template itself uh, any any questions about the conditions because it's a very important uh, part here uh, yes gautam in chat box eva asked one question sure so choose is like pre select plus read only uh, both happening together yes yes eva that's how it works thank you gautam can i also ask uh, did you mention what trigger a trigger is uh, uh, means, uh, to be frank it's currently used for internal purposes uh, so there are uh, some scenarios that we had in past where uh, uh, or also like uh, in one of the cases one of our clients uses it like there is a parent survey and there is uh, a child survey so even the uh, so uh, there is a newly added feature where there is a parent child relationship between surveys okay so suppose uh, uh, there is a survey and then there are like brand specific surveys okay, okay. Uh, so uh, if you answer a particular question in the main uh, parent survey then the brand survey should be automatically created under that parent survey okay so that mm -hmm. triggers uh, like uh, if you enter five brand names then it would create uh, five different surveys for individual branches or uh, individual brands okay so mm -hmm. that is used as a trigger so it is uh, like a bit complicated but it is not used in uh, all the scenarios so basically i have not covered that it, it would get more mm -hmm. complicated at this point that's okay yeah thank you thank you sure any other questions hope you guys are not overwhelmed but i'll cover one last uh, part uh, for this call uh, is like uh, the scoring uh, so which is uh, a most important part and uh, a bit of complex here so i'll try to explain you uh, in basics how the scoring in probench works okay so like Uh, in in a base of it uh, the scoring in probench works like a roll up uh, methodology okay so the score of the child uh, would impact the score of its parent and uh, the the score of the parent would impact its own parent so that's how the complete roll up would go so from the leaf node of the survey to the most uh, topmost node uh, the the scores would be carried forward or rolled up so that's how it works now just to give you an example here uh, so uh, say suppose this is a section here which is called as ethical okay uh, so this scores what i have mentioned here you can take it as weightages for those questions okay so score is equal to weightages if i may say that okay so uh, here uh, the ethical uh, section is having a score of 1 or the weightage of 1 Uh, out of the multiple sections that uh, there might be and inside the ethical section there is uh, one page or there are like say three pages okay so i want each of these pages or sub sections uh, to be having an equal weightage okay when it comes to the scoring okay uh, uh, or if i might decide uh, i can also give different weightages to each of the pages as well but uh, currently i have given equal weightages so that one can be divided into uh, three parts that is 0.333 would be equivalent to one so this would specify that all the three pages that are there under the section has the same weightage okay now to the next level uh, that is the child of the human resource so there are two childs under the human resource uh, and each of the child is again like divided uh by means uh, the one would be like or you might say 100% is divided into two so that is 0.5 and 0.5 so you can take a scale of 0 to 1 or 0 to 10 or 0 to 100 whatever scale suits you okay so here if it is 0 to 1 then i'll take it as 0.5 and 0.5 so 
the weightage of minimum age uh, would be 0.5 that is 50 percent and the weightage of supplier assessment would be 50 percent as well okay so i can i can change this if i want uh, i can put it as 0.75 as a weightage and 0.25 as a weightage so this has more importance than this and the weightages are uh, decided accordingly now furthermore in the tree okay if you see there is only one radio button and there is a file attachment for file attachment i don't want to give any weightage or there is there should not be any scored if any files is attached or not attached okay so that's a not scored uh, node okay so i, I can uh, make it as zero and the radio is weighted as one and under the radio uh, there is like uh, 10 5 and 0 so that means this is like one that is the highest point this can be given as 0 0.5 and there is zero okay so now if a user selects this particular uh, node okay so the user gets 50 percent for this uh, uh, radio okay for this particular question it would get 50 percent because 1 into 0 0.5 is equals to 50 percent okay so this 50 percent then goes up to uh, this uh, this node okay which is this group node is the parent of this one okay so then there would be 0 0.75 into 0 0.5 because i have just got 50 percent that is 0 0.5 so 0 0.75 into 0 0.5 okay so which would be 0 0.375 okay so my uh, when i see the score of this particular group or this particular question uh, i i will get 0 0.5 okay because the child node was 0 0.5 but when i see the score of this particular page okay then i'll get it as 0 0.375 okay because uh, to get the score of this, I have to multiply the weightage of this into the score that that node has got. Okay, so this weightage is basically used for the score of its parent. Okay, so that's how it's rolled up in a way. Okay, so it's very important to understand that this is not the actual score that is for that particular node, but it is the weightage of that node and it will be used for the calculation of score of its parent okay so if the uh, like in this case the parent has like multiples is 0 0.75 and 0 0.25 then whatever the score of this uh, if suppose they get 100% in 1.2 then 25% uh, is fixed and plus they get uh, 0 0.375 that is 37% so 37 plus 25 would be the uh, score of this particular parent uh, and then uh, similarly goes up to the so it's complete roll up of the scoring so it's kind of a bit tedious to kind of explain that but uh, hopefully you've gotten a bit of an idea like how the scoring works from bottom up so it goes from the leaf node to the the parent node okay so that's how the scoring uh, works in the template uh, so uh, got an idea here All right, and any questions? All right. So yeah, I'm not sure like uh, what's the time. I think we have already reached the time limit, but uh, I think if there are any questions uh, for any of the sections, uh, that I have covered in this section or you want to share any ideas, please uh, share and then we can end the session and we can have one more session uh, after the seventh one to actually get deeper into the template. So I, I kind of uh, acknowledge that this time limit that we have is not enough. So I, I'll uh, take it up in one of the next sessions. Any suggestions, any questions on how the templates work or how the survey is working? Any... I got them. I only have one um, idea of maybe if it would be possible to export a flowchart with the logic um, that would be really helpful, but I know that 
okay so be, uh, when it comes to flow chart like so uh, you want to have like which question would be visible on which logic true or false kind of a thing yeah all the visible nodes to show how they connect to each other got it yeah all right sure Yeah, that's an extensor. So that would give you a bird's eye view of how the whole logic and branching is working in our. Yeah, because I think at the, uh, otherwise there's no way to preview the the survey apart from the template. You have to click through in the front right. end. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. Sure. I'll I'll uh, take it up with the team. Thanks. All right. Uh, I think there are no further questions, no suggestions. Probably I've overwhelmed you guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, no problem. So I'll I'll uh, kind of uh, add the recording as usual. Uh, we'll uh, put it on the uh, the uh, the YouTube uh, section. Uh, and please do uh, send an email or write the comments in the YouTube uh, itself uh, about uh, anything that you would like me to change in the coming up se sessions uh, and I'll do uh, it accordingly. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much, uh, guys. Uh, have a great day. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.